Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and we are into the last video in my series of videos looking at the livery editor in Gran Turismo 7 and looking at how I created my most recent car livery. I deliberately went for a more minimalistic delivery and one that was clean and modern looking and I wanted a colour scheme that was red, black and white and one that featured colour gradients. And during this series of GT7 livery editor videos, we have looked at the creation of SVG files. We've painted the base color of our car using gradient panels within Gran Turismo 7. And in this video, we complete the project by adding sponsor decals to our car. And in doing so, we will really bring our livery to life. Now, throughout this series of videos, I will be using various image files. It is important to note that you must always get permission to use any image file that is not your own. In other words, an image file that you have not physically created yourself. If you are using somebody else's image file, you must either get written permission, you must purchase a license to use that image file, or you must acquire some other form of license to use that image file. You cannot simply download something off of the internet and assume that it is yours to do with as you please. My advice, therefore, is always to be very, very sure that you have adequate permission to use the images that you want to use in your liveries. For the avoidance of doubt, and with the exception of the in-game images, I have sought and obtained permission to use all of the images used within this video. So if we go back into the Gran Turismo livery editor, you can see that we have our base car painted. So we've got uh, black and at the front and the back with white in the middle and then the gradient between the red wheels. We've basically got our base car uh, done. So if we now go into body, we can then start to add in the decals that we want on our car. So if we go to other, first of all, now we can go to collection and we haven't actually got any decals in there whatsoever. Likewise, we shared items and in my items, We've got a few which should come in. There we go. Took a little bit of time to come in uh, and they are loading at the moment. Uh, my machine is a little bit slow, but we've got a number of images that are coming in. So my number and we've got the GTO Mega Clean will come in in a moment, Rev Logo, etc. So these are all of the images that we uploaded in a previous video uh, that we found on line or with, that we created ourselves as SVG files. Now I've also got a few others I want to include that I know are available from within the game. So if we go to content search and I put in here Pink Floyd, I want a graphic which is uh, the war. So if I just type in the keyword that we're looking for, it does condense the word if you put two words in and we can then see a number of images that are already available to us as Gran Turismo compatible SVG files. And I'm just going to go and grab this Pink Floyd the wall and I'm going to add it to the collection. You can add it to favorites as well if you wish. Um, it depends, that obviously depends on where you uh, want it to, to show. So you can add it to a favorites list or what I intend to do is just add it into my collection so that it is readily available to me on the sidebar. So if you go to collection now, then you can see that image is there. So if I'm out in Gran Turismo looking for images and I might want to use it again and again and again in different liveries, then I'll drop it in the collection and it's always there for me. I haven't got to worry about it disappearing or trying to remember what it was called, or where I find it. Now there's a number of other images that I want. So GT Omega is one. We want a graphic for the bonnet and we also want one for the back and the side of the car. So I'm just going to add these into the collection as well. I'm not sure whether I want to use the white or the black uh, GT image with the wings. So I'll grab both of those. Uh, we're definitely going to want the black one. And there are a couple in here. So I tend to just browse through and then pick the one that I like best, which is very often the one that's displayed earliest. I guess it's the most popular. Uh, we need that one as well for the back of the car. And then we can come 
out of there, search again, put in a different keyword. So just remove that one. And this time I'm going to put in YouTube. So I want to have a YouTube logo on the back of the car. All of these logos actually mean something to me. I'll, I'll probably touch on those as we go through the video as to why I've selected them for the car. And again, there's lots of different YouTube um, graphics in here. I'm obviously going to go with a white version because it's going to go on the black part of the car. But if I was putting it onto the white part of the car, then I might want YouTube in black. So again, lots and lots and lots of different options that are already available for you. You don't need to worry about having to create your own SVG files. Right, rather than you sit here watching me pull down all of these different files, I'm just going to speed through the video and I'll be back with you in just a moment or two. Okay, so we'll just save the last one, which is the Powered by BMW Motorsport image here. I'm going to save that to the collection. I've saved all of these images now into my collection so that I can easily find them when I need them, rather than having to do the search all of the time. So now in collection, you can see here, these are all of the images that I have just saved. Might not necessarily use all of those on this particular livery, but I've, uh, I've got them for the future. It basically, if I see something I like the look of, then I will grab it. So when we're placing the decals on our car, you want to make sure that you are looking directly at the surface that you are going to be dropping the decal onto. So if you imagine you're sitting in front of a window or a door and you're putting a sticker on, you're going to stand exactly in front of the panel. So you're going to have yourself, the sticker, and then the surface, you're going to stick it on directly in front of you. You wouldn't do it at an angle. You want to do the same with your car. Now I've left this error in here as another example of things that can go wrong for you. I'm trying to drop this uh, graphic of Pink Floyd the Wall onto the roof and you can see that it's flashing uh, away there. Now the problem is that I'm on the wrong panel and if I had hit the R3 button, then it would have, told me which editable panels I was working with, and I neglected to do that. I've been doing that in previous videos, but I didn't in this one. And it took me a few minutes to realize what I was doing, and then I had to select the correct uh, location, the body, and then go back in to the collection, pick up the image file, and then I was able to drop it onto the roof. So when you're working, if things aren't working out as you would imagine, remember that R3 button, it's really, really useful. And then when you get to the correct location, you'll see now that although the graphic is blinking and flashing, whatever you want to call it, it's not blinking or flashing in the same way. And we can now resize that image and then we can move the car around. As I always do, I spend quite a bit of time when I'm working on my cars, in particular when I'm dropping the bottle pan and colors on or the graphics, I move the car around a lot to see what they look like at, from all directions. Now you won't often be looking down on the top of a car, um, so this graphic probably won't get seen that often when I'm in the game, uh, but needless to say, I like to make sure that everything is all nicely lined up, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to zoom in and zoom out just to make sure that everything is all OK. And then when you are happy, then we can move on. Now, the next logo that I'm going to put on is the Mitchell Morgan Racing logo on the boot. And I've said a lot about being aware of where you are putting your decals. This is another example of an error but I actually got away with this one. Uh, I started to drop the logo onto the boot of the car rather than the spoiler. Now, obviously, if you're going to be spending a lot of time lining up and sizing an image or a decal or a body panel or whatever, it makes sense to come out of this window from time to time 
move the camera around and just make sure that it looks okay. There will actually be another issue with this one in that it is probably going to be too deep and bleeding down through the spoiler. So again, this is another example of why you need to place the graphic and then move your car around uh, quite a fair bit until you find that everything is exactly as you want it. So at the moment, I'm still trying to put it onto the boot, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but luckily on this particular part, I could move it over onto the spoiler. I'm just turning the camera around so that I can actually see the logo the right way up. I'm, I'm a little bit two minds about this because the words are straight across and the spoiler is curved. I may well at some point go in and redo this graphic in a, an editor so that it is curved in the same way that the spoiler is. So I'm not overly happy with this. It looks reasonably okay, um, but I would like to just tidy that up a little bit so that it, it follows the same contours of the spoiler as it were. Okay, so I'm just lining the car up with the side now because the next graphic that we're going to be applying is going to be the GT Omega. And you can see I've learnt my lesson. I'm now doing the R3 button to make sure that I am working with the appropriate panel. I like to get the car exactly level with eye level when you're applying the decals as well. So I'm only getting the panel so that you're looking straight on, but also think about the vertical nature of your view that can make a difference too. And sometimes I can spend a few moments just moving the car around until I get exactly where I want it to place that particular graphic. So we're going to go into collection and we're going to come down to find the GT Omega logo. This is going to be the black and red one. Uh, the white and red one is going to go on the back of the car. And we're going to drop that on, just move it around. And we can move using the left joystick. We can scale using the right joystick. And at the bottom of the screen there, you can see all of the buttons that you need to move the graphics around. So if you want to rotate it, you've got L2 and R2 etc. So you've always got those prompts at the bottom of the screen. And also think about the contours and the lines of your car. For instance, this is exactly horizontal, but it actually looks a little bit better if I tilt it slightly to follow the lines of the car. So again, just take your time in placing these images. I'm going to go to layer controls and I'm going to duplicate it on the other side. Now I've done duplicate symmetry and you can see, as I mentioned in the previous video, that it's actually dropped it on but reversed it. What I needed to do, and I make this mistake all the time, is I need to pick up that graphic and I just need to duplicate on the opposite side and then Gran Turismo will paint the graphic correctly. And if you get it wrong, it's easy enough just to go into the layer, delete it, and then just add it again. So now we go to the back of the car, and you can see straight away that one of my issues is with the Mitchell Morgan Racing has bled through, but because I didn't look around the car, I hadn't noticed. So I'm going to change the camera angle and I'm going to change the limit depth to minus 10, where we lose some of the graphic on the spoiler. So if we put it to minus eight, we now find that that looks fine on the spoiler and it isn't bleeding through. So be very aware of your limit depth. So you can see there we're at zero, it bleeds through, or 10, it's going to bleed through onto other panels. There are times when you might want to have graphics that bleed through, but in this instance, we don't. So I'll just set a lower value. Just check all the way around to make sure that the car is 
looking exactly as we want to before we go on and do the next layer so we'll add a new layer and we'll go back out to the collection and this time we are going to grab it's taken a while to come in these uh, graphics uh, we're going to grab the, um, the GTO Omega and I want the white and red version and we will just move that into the location that we want now I'm zoomed out quite a long way so we can zoom in if we need to to have a look and get a better look sometimes I'll apply my graphics from a little bit further away as if a car was following you so you can see what they look like and then I might zoom in later on just to get some fine tuning of that particular graphic so I'm going to my items this time because we want the Revelation software logo. Now that's going to come in black, so we're going to color it white. And then we can go into the sizing controls and just bring it down further down onto the bumper. I want it just below that line where you've got the gray into the black. So it's the lower part of the bumper. And then we can just size that, position it accordingly. I'm just going to make that, that that's way too big. I want to try and keep it in proportion to the GT Omega icon above, but it's quite difficult this one because the Revelation software logo is fairly rectangular, whereas the GT Omega one, it's sort of a little bit offset. It, it's not overly symmetrical, so it's going to take a little bit of playing around just to get those looking nice. And it all comes down to aesthetics and what you like more than anything else. So the next icon that we're going to do, or the image we're going to do is uh, the FIA one on the top of the window. But just while I'm working on this, some of the graphics I'm using, or most of the graphics I'm using mean something to me. So Pink Floyd The Wall happens to be my favorite music group. And The Wall is an album that actually resonates with me going right the way back to my childhood. Now, I don't have the FIA logo, so I'm going to need to go out and grab that. So this is just showing you that you can go and grab a logo at any time. You don't need to do it at the very beginning. It, uh, it's a very intuitive workflow, and you can just grab the image as and when you need it. Uh, I'm just looking for a, a plain white one, but there's quite a few FIA logos in here, so just finding one that I like. And when I do find it, again, I'm going to add it to my collection. Now, FIA. I wanted a small white logo to go in the center of that little uh, area on the back of the car there. And I've been into motor racing for all of my life. Um, World Rally car, Formula One, British touring cars, German touring cars, uh, Australian news, the whole lot. So I just wanted to have the FIA logo in there to represents all of those so going back into the collection and on the other side i'm going to have the snap-on logos the reason we're going for snap-on is i spent about 12 years in the motor trade actually ended up running the workshop and my guys would often purchase their tools from snap-on and on a weekly basis i used to have to deal with the snap-on guy so that was a ford dealer that i worked in and putting a Ford badge on something like a BMW or a Subaru or Porsche really doesn't work. So I wanted something that was not manufacturer specific and the Snap-on logo works quite well. And I like the red because that is setting off our black, white and red color scheme. So I'm just positioning these. I'm not quite sure whether I want to have those straight or angled. I quite like the angled. So we're going to duplicate that on the other side. And yet again, I've done it wrong. Uh, I always do this, so delete that layer. And all we want to do is to grab that particular layer and then just simply duplicate it on the opposite side. And then that will drop that onto the car for us. So I'm reasonably happy with that. It's looking OK for the moment. So again, you can see there just R3 was just showing that that is the panel that I was working on. That R3 button is really, really useful and I do not use it often enough. OK, so I'm just spinning the car around to the front and we'll start to turn our attention to the bonnets area. 
So we're going to pop into our collection. And the first image that I think we will grab is going to be the GT Omega one. Now I want the white one. I could go with black, but I quite like the white and red. So I think we'll go with that one for the moment. And we're going to go into my items this time. And we're going to pick up the um, Revelation software logo. Now, for some reason, these are taking a little bit of time to come in. Let's just try that again. Oh, we've actually picked up the uh, the number, that's, uh, but that's not the number that I want. So I'm going to delete that layer. Uh, I've got a green one and a red one. I prefer the red one for this particular car. So we'll go back into my items. That's coming a little bit better. So we'll pick up the Revelation software logo, which is the one I was going to grab. I'm going to color it white because it comes in black. And then we'll just move into the tool to reposition it. And we're going to make that a fairly bit bigger. And I'm just going to have that at the front of the bonnet. And uh, that would look quite nice there, I think. I just want to make this a, a little bit, not that big, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, make sure that it is central. OK, it looks reasonably OK. So if we just move it around just to make sure that it looks OK from all angles, looking at it from the side and above and from the front. Reasonably OK with that one. Now, one of the things that I want to do here is I'm not overly happy with the bonnet. It's not really black enough. So I've just duplicated one of the layers again to make the front of that bonnet a little bit more black. And I think that uh, that is going to make quite a big difference. And again, this is we thought we got the paintwork perfect, but we do need to make a small change as you go along and putting those white icons on the front of those white decals on the front showed that I really needed to have a little bit more black at the front of the car. So we're just adding in the additional uh, shape for the bonnet and also for the wings so that we keep that nice gradient across the car. And that's really showing off that Revelation software logo really nicely now. That's really nice. OK, so let's turn our attention to the very front of the car, the front bumper. And uh, let's just go into the decals and we want to pick up the body. Let's turn it round so it's facing us. Uh, just make sure that we uh, using the R3 that we are looking at the right area. And we'll add a layer. And this time we'll go into collection and we're going to pick up the Fanatec logo. Should we do that one next? I think, yeah, let's just do Fanatec. And I want that to be just below the kidney grill. Again, I need to colour it white. And where is it? Just need to just bring it down. There we go. I just want to have that below the kidney grill and just resize that so it's sitting nicely on that panel. Again, just taking a little bit of time just to get it lined up nicely. Thinking about the proportions to the Revelation software above, the size of the kidney grill, the space that's available, and just working it so that we get it just where we want. Sometimes I find with the joysticks, it tends to snap a little bit. I'm not quite as smooth as I would like. I think that would do. While we're in this area, I also want to add in a couple more snap-on uh, images. These are going to go underneath the lights. Now, on some cars, they will be horizontal. On some cars, they will be slightly twisted at an angle. And with this particular car, I think we will probably have them at an angle. Now, I'm breaking one of my rules. Really, I should have moved the camera a little bit uh, to be able to locate these. But I wasn't sure whether to have it on the front or just underneath the light. So again, it, it, it sort of depends on where you're going to put them. Um, I wasn't sure whether to have it there or directly underneath the light. I'm, I'm actually changing my mind. I actually quite like it there. So we will do I want symmetrical. No, I've done it again. Uh, let's just delete that one. And we will 
This is okay. I need to duplicate it. Come on, on the opposite side. There we go. That one. That's better. That's better. Now, I, I actually quite like it on the front of the bumper there, as opposed to underneath the lights. Um, so again, just moving the camera around just to make sure that it is looking how we would like them. I actually, I actually prefer that. My initial feeling was to have it sort of more facing upwards, directly underneath the lights, but uh, that actually works quite nicely. I, I like that. So making sure that we've got the bonnet by using our R3 this time, we're going to add a new layer, and this time we're going to go into my items, and we'll pick up the red number that is in a box. Now again, this is a format that I'm going to do very often when organizers stick the number on your car. They tend to put it at uh, strange angles, so it would normally be uh, sort of top right, bottom left. I, on this car, I want to have it following the lines of the bonnet. So I'm actually going to have it probably facing the wrong way, um, but I, I just prefer the look of it. Uh, that way. If you want to be a little bit more realistic, then you need to think about where organizers might slap stickers on. Uh, likewise, I'm not putting a tow hook and an electric icon and things like that on the car, which uh, a lot of organizers would require. So again, you want to think about how realistic you want your car to be. Uh, for me, I just want something that looks nice uh, from my own personal point of view. Okay, so we're just going to go into the uh, to my items. Actually, no, I want collection, don't I? Uh, collection, because we want to pick up the um, Gran Turismo logo. Is that the one I want next? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, the Gran Turismo icon. And then we will just resize that oops we we'll resize that image move it across and that's going to sit across the top of the number now it could have created the svg file with that on there but then that would have been a lot of extra work to get the svg file down small enough so it made sense to leave the space on the number for the Gran Turismo icon. And then below that, I'm actually going to put a BMW Motorsport one on this particular example. Um, so may well need to have a different logo for a different car, um, but I've left it so that I've just got the blank black space so that I can put whatever, uh, whatever additional uh, images that I want on that particular graphic. So we'll just come over here and grab the Power by BMW Motorsports logo. And then again, we'll just drag that over, twist it, rotate it around, and just get that sized exactly where we want it. And I think, although the Grand Turismo is top left, but this one, I pretty much want that central and just to make sure that it is nicely lined up. Again, we could zoom in if we wanted to on this one, but for the sake of the video, uh, I'm just going to pop that there. I may well come back and just tidy that up uh, a little bit later. It's a little bit too far over onto the right, but I don't want to waste your time sitting here watching me spend five or 10 minutes getting a image perfectly aligned. So just taking a little look around the car there. It's certainly starting to look rather nice. So now we want to start adding in the logos on the rear bumper. So we're going to go to the collection and the image that I'm going to use first of all is going to be the uh, Helix Ultra image. Now this is black for the moment. So we're going to need to make that white. And then we'll just drag that onto the back of the bumper um, over towards the revelation side. So it's behind the little cutout, which you can't really see 
uh, with the black on black, but there's like a little cutout. You can see as you turn it that it, uh, it goes behind that. Uh, so I want that in that area. And once we've got that positioned where we want it, we'll go across to duplicate that on the other side. I got it right this time, thank goodness. And that looks nice. Just checking to make sure that we haven't got any bleed through or anything on that. And then I've moved the panel around so that we are looking at more the side of the bumper. Because in the next set of images I want to have, and it's four of them, one under each other but on the side of the bumper. So again, moving the car around so I'm looking straight on. So we're going to bring in the Sparco image. We're going to need to take that down significantly in size. And I'm just going to roughly place this for the moment, roughly in line with the Helix Ultra. And then I'm going to bring the others in and just see if the sizing looks reasonably OK. So you can see there, I've got a little bit of a bleed through on that particular image, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment. I'll sort the, well, let's go ahead and do it now. So the limit depth, I need to take that down to minus 10. And then if we spin that around, you can see now that it's not bleeding through at all. So we're okay with that. So let's just spin that back. And we'll go ahead and grab a, another layer and another image. So for this one, I think we will go back into collection and we're going to grab the Fanatec one again. Now, I did say that a lot of these icons mean things to me. So the GT Omega, I've used the main one at the side because I'd love to get a GT Omega rig. I'd like the, the prime rig I'm saving up for. Uh, so that's something that I aspire to. Um, we've got the Shell Helix Ultra just purely because I wanted a fuel sponsor on the car. And if I've got the option of any of the premium fuels, and I usually go with Shell. We've got Fanatec because I would really love to get the Fanatec wheel. I know that Logitech have just recently bought out a new wheel, but um, Fanatec is the one that I would really like to get. So that's another thing that I aspire to. Uh, we're also going to drop um, polyphony, polyphony, however you pronounce that on there, because obviously I've been playing Gran Turismo for the longest time. And then underneath that, we're going to have Microsoft, because obviously I, uh, I do work in the IT industry and I use a lot of Microsoft products as well as our own. And obviously Revelation Software logo is on there because that is the logo for my company, which gives away my real name for those of you that want to go and Google it. So the next image that we need to include is the Microsoft image. Again, it's black, so we need to just make that white. Um, I've also got Sparco on there. Um, no real reason other than I quite liked it with the white outline. Um, that might get replaced with something else, but uh, for the moment, I quite like having the, the Sparco logo there. And if we just get this Microsoft one lined up, now, what I will do at the end of this video, after I finish recording, I'm going to zoom in really close and get all of these graphics lined up. But like I said, I, I don't want to spend all of my time or well, wasting all of your time on this video whilst I get everything perfectly lined up. And so we're just going to now go ahead and duplicate all of those layers onto the other side of the car using duplicate opposite side and it's quite nice that uh, Gran Turismo keeps the, uh, the two graphics paired so although I'm putting these in in a uh, strange order you're going to see that they are actually logged as one layer after the other with the two Microsoft paired the two Polyphony paired so you've got uh, you've got a nice easy way of finding them in the list there now you can see that we've got a bleed through where we're coming through from the outside of the uh, bumper onto the inside of the bumper. So I'm just going to move down that Helix Ultra a little bit so I've got it in line with the Sparco. So what I'm now going to do is to delete the other side 
and then I will just do a duplication so that I know that they are exactly aligned properly. Okay, so there again, you can see that bleed through on this side. So we're just going to need to go into each of those graphics. So we start off with the Microsoft one, I think that was. Yeah, Microsoft. And we'll just go across to the projection settings and we'll change the limit depth to probably minus 10 should be okay. Just double check. So there we go, no bleed through now. So all we need to do is to make that same change on all of the other layers. Now it would have made sense for me to have uh, changed the limit depths on one side before I duplicated them over. Uh, that would have been a nice time saving exercise. But unfortunately I'm making work for myself by having to do all eight um, of the images rather than just four and then copy them over. Of course, what I could do is to delete them all off of one side and then duplicate them and move them over. But um, yeah, I'm just going to go through here and just change the limit depth on, on each of them. That's already starting to look rather nice. I like having this little uh, group of sponsors on the back bumper there. It just flows around. And I didn't want lots of sponsors all over the car and all down the side of the car. I wanted to try and keep the GT Omega logo just on its own as the key sponsor of the car. Uh, with Revelation software on the back and the front. Uh, so when we're racing, people can see that in the back and also in the mirror if they are running on that particular view. Uh, but that's looking a lot nicer now. That is a really nice looking car. I'm really pleased with that. There we go. So I think there may well be a few other little bits to touch up at some point. Uh, but in the main, I'm pretty happy with the way that that car looks. It looks pretty, I think it looks pretty stylish. I think it looks clean and uh, that's going to look pretty striking on the track. I didn't want something that was too fussy. So we just saved it and then we can close out of this window. And we're going to apply the design. And that will then take us back to the garage where we can actually see this in its shiny fullness in the garage. You can see some of that uh, where the gradient is, you've got the lines. You lose all of that when you see it in, in the garage for real. And I quite like some of the little subtle details, the little bit of black that runs up the A-pillar, for instance. And really, really pleased with that. I think it looks really striking. Very, very striking. Okay, so we're just going to open that. And we're just going to edit the design, make one small change. I just want to add on the, the YouTube icons that I have forgotten. So again, I've just moved the camera angle around. So I checked with the R3 to make sure that we've got the right panel. And I've just moved the car around. So I'm looking directly down onto that particular panel. I could probably have shifted it ever so slightly, just, just moved it around a little bit more. But I think that that works. And I wanted to follow the the line of that to recorder panel, just duplicate it on the other side. And yeah, I quite like that. I think that looks really, really nice. And the eye line actually follows now through from the front, the GTO Mega, and then the YouTube just carries it up over the wheel to the rear spoiler. And I think that that just carries that line beautifully from the front to the back now. Really, really pleased with that car. Uh, there may well be small modifications that we will do going forwards, but in the main, very, very, very pleased. 
And I think at that, we will bring this video to a close and this initial look at the livery editor within Gran Turismo 7. There's a lot more to it than this. You've got all sorts of different shapes with creating some very intricate designs. And you can see lots of liveries out on cars. And of course, you can always go to the livery editor and pull somebody else's livery. And that is something that I haven't covered within this because uh, you know, lots of people will just go and grab somebody else's livery. This has all been about creating your own livery and having the satisfaction of having a car that you actually created rather than somebody else. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, it is a new channel. I'm trying to build my subscriber account at the moment to the magic thousand. Long way to go yet. And if you're a returning visitor, thank you ever so much for supporting the channel. It's great to have you along. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon on another video. For now, take care. Bye bye.